Welcome to the MinWorks, the MinStack workshop on full-stack JavaScript. This workshop is designed to work with Node.js version 5.1.0 and the last was updated in January 2016. What is Min? It's MongoDB, Express, Angular and Node.js. In this video, we'll quickly go over the mean stack and each of its components, starting with the Mongo database, then switch to the Mongo database and uh, explore its shell, and some of the benefits of NoSQL database, as well as I'll show you a demo how to work with the Mongo shell and how to execute its commands. Then we'll dive deep into Express.js basics and switch to Angular and uh, the full stack generator and its commands. In addition to this video lecture, you could also explore the MeanWorks adventure, which is an automated workshop. It will give you some problems to solve and then it will verify them for you. So after you proceed, after you complete one, you can proceed to the next one. This way you will first install all of the dependencies and set up your environment, then use the full stack generator to instantiate the commands, to instantiate the app, and uh, gradually build the application. So I recommend watching this video and then completing the MinWorks adventure, which is a workshop, the practical part of this course. As far as the requirements, obviously you will need Node.js, NPM and MongoDB. We'd also use Grunt, Yeoman for code generator, the full stack generator itself, and then the web driver, because our tool, our workshop will test the code on uh, certain elements that must present there. Then obviously you would need a code editor, I do not recommend using an IDE for this workshop. Usually IDEs tend to overcomplicate things. The, so simple text or code editor like Sublime Text Atom or TextMate or Vim or Emacs would work very beautifully. Then you would need a command line app, either Terminal or iTerm or a command prompt on Windows. You'd also need an internet connection to download the dependencies. And uh, you can also get the slides at uh, azad-co slash minworks on the GitHub, as well as the sample code for the project and the workshop itself. In case you're working under the corporate uh, proxy, you should configure your NPM, Bower and Git to work under that proxy, but following this link in executing uh, commands to configure those tools. There is also a more detailed PDF document with the setup instructions for Node.js and MongoDB. Feel free to get it. It's on my GitHub as well. Okay, so we need to install this library's power. It's a dependency management tool for front-end libraries. Grant, it's a build tool. Nodemon, it's a tool to start Node.js uh, servers and to restart them automatically and Mocha, it's a development tool. The MinWorks automated workshop will walk you through the installation of these tools as well. Again, the slides are in the GitHub and the application, the final application that we will be building, it's in the app folder. You can clone the repository and get the tool and the code, the source code for the example app as well as the slides. Or you can read them in the browser. A little bit about myself. My name is Azat Mardan. I'm a technology fellow at Capital One. I write at webapplog.com. I wrote books such as React Quickly, Full Stack JavaScript, Practical Node.js, Pro Express, and as well as many other books and courses. So let's meet MinStack. 
First, before we proceed, I want to highlight some of the benefits for you as a developer. There are more benefits to the mean stack, but the most important in my mind is the rapid prototyping, one language to rule them all, and vibrant community. What I mean by rapid prototyping? Angular has this thing, it's called two-way binding, so you can actually write less code. Also, Angular does a lot of other things, so it's very feature-rich. You can prototype faster on the front-end side. MongoDB also good for prototyping because there's no schemas. We'll talk about the schemaless approach later. And then you have one language to rule them all. This is wonderful because when you have one language, you need to learn just one language you can remember the interface easier, you can remember the libraries easier. So it's a great thing. You could also reuse code on the, for example, a browser library can use it on the back end and vice versa. The back end library could be used on the front end. Can you share your own libraries, your own files, modules, or you can share things like a template, for example. And then you have the vibrant community. JavaScript has been around since 1995. There are tons of books, tons of great developers to learn from. There are a lot of blogs, a lot of conferences. You can get the benefit of this tremendous, huge amount of knowledge. And uh, basically the industry's best, best practices accumulated over years. We also have the standard ES6, ECMA, ES6 now, ES7 is coming. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice approach. So how Angular, Node.js, and Express, and uh, MongoDB work together? So in the browser or client, we have Angular.js. That's our front-end framework, the browser framework. We do not use J jQuery, we do not use React, we do not use Ember, we do not use Backbone. You can use all of them with Node.js, Express, and MongoDB, but in this stack, we're using Angular. And the way it talks with the server, it uses AJAX or XHR request, which stands for asynchronous Java and XML, but no one uses XML anymore. We use JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. So a browser will send an AJAX request to the server and server will respond with the JSON. So how the server knows what to get, it has some logic, it has some code, again, written in Node or JavaScript. And uh, the data comes from MongoDB. And MongoDB, what's good about it, it also uses JavaScript interface. So server libraries and database libraries, they're written in C++, but they have JavaScript interfaces so we can write using JavaScript scripting language. And uh, JavaScript on the client and on the server, they're very similar, but not they're not exactly the same. They're different implementation of one standard of ECMAScript standard. Another thing to, to notice here is that Node.js and MongoDB, they communicate with JSON as well. So that's great. You don't need to learn SQL. If you learn SQL, you don't have to keep using it or remembering. It's pretty complex to write joins, inner joins, left joins, all other queries. So we can just use plain objects. It's a more eloquent way than XML, obviously. This chart is taken from uh, Google Trends. I took it from the Google Trends and you can see that the popularity of this framework, frameworks go, they go up and it's good uh, to use the stack that is uh, promising, that has potential, that the, the trends are going up. You don't want to use a framework who is declining in popularity. Orange color for Angular, blue is for Node and the other green one for Express. Also, there are a lot of uh, code generators. As I said, it's a very good community out there. And this uh, screenshot is from mean.io. So let's discuss a little bit each component individually. So MongoD MongoDB, what is it? It's a NoSQL database. What is Express? It's a web HTTP server framework. So Node.js, it's, it's not a framework by itself. So we need some sort of framework because we don't want to write a lot of code by ourselves. 
because basically we will end up with a lot of uh, code that is similar to reinventing the wheel. We want to leverage open source frameworks like Express. Then Angular is also a framework, but it's not a backend framework, it's a front end framework. It, we use it in the browser. Express, we use it on the server, we use it on the backend. And then Node.js, that's what enables us to use Express, and we also use it to communicate with MongoDB. It has this thing called non blocking IO to power Express.js and to connect to MongoDB. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper on MongoDB. There are a lot of types of NoSQL databases, for example, key and value store database, graph store database. This particular type, the document store NoSQL database, that's what MongoDB is using. What is document store? Think about it as a huge JSON or collection of JSON objects. Each JSON is kind of a document and you can have a lot of nested documents one inside of another. So one JSON object inside of another JSON object. It's not really JSON, MongoDB is using Bison or Bison, B-S-O-N, which stands for binary JSON. But for for this uh, analogy, think about it as just a JSON. Bison has some extra data types in addition to the normal JavaScript types. MongoDB, it's very scalable. It's uh, replication and high availability. It's good for prototyping. There is no schema, so you don't need to come up with a schema only to change it a day later when you need to add a table or a column. There's no relational data. There is no structural data. So all the data migrates to app level. You can use an object document mapper like Mongoose, and you'll be using that for the in the generator, as part of the generator. So we don't need to store the relational data in the database. And it has the JavaScript interface. To install MongoDB, uh, I would just go to mongodb.org slash downloads, pick the appropriate operation system, or you can use Brew if you're using Mac OS X. To launch the MongoDB server, you would start MongoDB command and then just let it run. It will be listening on port 27017. One quick note here, uh, when you're installing it, you also need to set up your slash data slash db folder proper, proper, properly by setting up the permissions uh, to your user instead of making it a root. And then once your database is running, you will uh, open a client, Mongo shell, for example, in a new window and execute by executing in Mongo command. A few of the methods here, save, dot find, they're very self-explanatory. And we're using JavaScript here. So save would uh, save an object, create a new object in the database, find would uh, query the database, you know, that collection, test as a collection, db.test.save. So db, it's a mandatory name and the test it's an arbitrary name so test is just the name of the collection it can change but db always stays the same and the method name save and find they stay the same if you in doubt in doubt uh, execute the help command show dbs will show you the dbs use board board is the name of the database so that will switch to the database and then inside of the database you would uh, use show collections to get the list of collections and then db.messages.remove uh, that get rid of all the items that collection. Some more examples. It's just uh, JavaScript like uh, your browser console where you can execute JavaScript so we can assign an object, you can find it and assign it to a variable and then uh, create a new property, a.message equals high, save that object. Uh, we can also update using a query. So for example, update name John will update, will set the message to buy to all the document that have this matching criteria, name equals John. So let me do a demo of how you can work in the Mongo shell.